everything's haunted, the, the city's haunted. We're getting spooky with the star of Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches, Alexandra Daddario. And we've got the stories that define the week on People in 10. I'm Malcolm Jovu, bringing you everything you need to know about pop culture right now. 10 minutes are on the clock, so let's get to it with the first five. Starting with the latest on Buffalo Bills player Damar Hamlin, who suffered a cardiac arrest during Monday night's game against the Cincinnati Bengals. They had to resuscitate him. Hamlin's uncle told CNN Tuesday that the 24-year-old safety remained sedated after his heart stopped on the field. The following day, a friend told ESPN that Hamlin had shown promising progress overnight. Hamlin collapsed in the first quarter of the game after he tackled Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins. He received CPR on the field for about 10 minutes before being taken by ambulance to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. Hamlin's family, including his mom, were in Cincinnati for the game and joined him on the way to the hospital. His family released a statement the next day asking everyone to keep praying and also thanking everyone for their love and support. On Tuesday, a rep for Hamlin tweeted that his vitals were back to normal, though he was still intubated at the time while doctors performed tests. And the shocking injury had one unexpected effect. Since the incident on Monday, donations have poured in for Hamlin's annual holiday toy drive. Third annual toy drive, man. We're doing it for the kids. Having a good time, man. The fundraiser originally had a goal of raising $2,500, but now donations are in the millions. And Jeremy Renner is speaking out just days after he suffered extensive injuries in a snowplow accident. The actor shared a photo from his hospital bed, admitting he was too messed up to type, but thanking fans for all their support. This week, Nevada authorities revealed more details about the incident. At this point in the investigation, we do not believe Mr. Renner was impaired at all, and we believe this is a tragic accident. Police say Renner was helping a family member get a stuck vehicle out of the snow on New Year's Day when he was run over by the snowplow, which weighs over 14,000 pounds. He sustained blunt chest trauma and orthopedic injuries and underwent surgery the following day. Renner is beloved for playing Hawkeye in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let's give him hell. And we spotted many of his famous friends sending love after the accident, including his Marvel co-stars, Mark Ruffalo and Haley Steinfeld, as well as filmmaker James Gunn. And this week's People Cover Story, we're remembering TV icon Barbara Walters from high profile interviews we'll never forget. Thank you, President Castro, for your time. To the trail she blazed for women, Walters changed broadcast journalism forever. Drew Barrymore tells us that she'll remember Barbara as a true pioneer, while Christiane Amanpour shared that she's an inspiration to her. She even called her a warrior queen. At nearly 70 years old, Walters went on to launch The View. How proud when I see all the young women who are making and reporting the news. And left an indelible mark on her audience and her co-hosts. Whoopi Goldberg calls Barbara the OG and says that there will never be another like her. Joy Behar told me that she'll remember her not only as a mentor, but as a girlfriend. While Meredith Vieira cherishes Barbara's playful side and her ability to tell a really dirty joke. And Walters wasn't the only figure we lost over the last week. In just the span of a few days, we also said goodbye to soccer icon Pelé, legendary fashion designer Vivian Westwood, and former head of the Catholic Church, Pope Benedict XVI. Switching gears now to some new love for the new year. Brad Pitt rang in 2023 in Mexico alongside his girlfriend, Ines de Ramon. A source tells People that the Oscar winner and jewelry designer are dating and having fun and have a good thing going on. 100%. This as Cher kicked off the new year with her boyfriend, A.E. Edwards. She was all smiles in the photo she captioned, Happy New Year, Daddy, and flashed a new ring, which sparked engagement buzz front and center. TLC's Chili and Matthew Lawrence are also digging on each other. This week, a rep for Chili confirmed they're dating after they showed off their dance moves together over the holidays. Take on me. Take on me. 
The rep adds, quote, I've never seen her this in love. She is glowing. They are really cute together. And while we lean into the 90s nostalgia with that duo, Robin Roberts is looking to the future, setting some new year intentions for love. I'm saying yes to marriage. We're getting married this year. The GMA host plans to marry her longtime partner, Amber Lane, who battled breast cancer last year, 14 years after she was a caregiver for Roberts on her breast cancer journey. Next up, the post you've been loving this week. A new promo for Prince Harry's upcoming 60 Minutes interview has royal fans buzzing. Can you see a day when you would return as a full-time member of the royal family? No. The revealing convo will mark Harry's first US TV interview about his memoir, Spare, out January 10th. And Gail King took turning 68 to the next level. Happy birthday to you. With not one, not two, but three B-Day celebrations in New York, California, and Hawaii. And of course, her BFF Oprah made an appearance. But the biggest surprise might have been a special serenade from The Temptations. Oh, my girl, my girl. And Valerie Bertinelli was pumped to celebrate her first New Year's Day since her divorce. I think I finally clean. She says the first day of 2023 was so much happier than last year, and she's excited to be free. We love to see it. Now let's move on to some screen time. I am so excited to be joined by Alexandra Daddario, whose show Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches comes out on January 8th on AMC Plus and AMC. I've spent years building the life I thought I wanted, but there's something inside of me something that I can't explain. I'm going to ask you five questions. For question number one, you'll give me one answer. Question number two, you'll give me two answers, and so on and so forth. Are you ready to get started? I absolutely love the series. The show is based on Anne Rice's best-selling trilogy, The Mayfair Witches. Now you play a neurosurgeon in this who discovers that she's an heir to a family of witches. If you had to inherit one superpower, what would it be? I would want to um, fly. When I was younger, I always wanted to be invisible so I could hear what people were saying about me, but I don't want that anymore at all. Um, I don't want to know. Um, like, I'd, I'd love to have the power to heal. How amazing would that be? Now, I've been a fan of your career for a long time, uh, from New Girl to True Detective to your Emmy nomination for White Lotus. Congratulations on that. The chemistry was there. You've shared a lot of scenes with a lot of different people. Who are two co-stars? that you shared scenes with that surprised you the most? Interesting, um, Sir Ben Kingsley I worked with. Um, I don't know what I was expecting, but um, he was so funny and kind and, but he said, he, he said, he was so honest and direct and, um, and I really, I just adored him. But I think I was, I think I was taken aback by I was like, oh my God, Sir Ben Kingsley's so warm and so funny and so wants to like be friendly. What'd you tell him? I didn't tell him anything. Nothing. No. Uma Thurman, I remember being so impressed by how she came in. This was in the first Percy Jackson movie. This was a long time ago. Again, I was young, so you'd like see everyone, you're like, whoa. Um, but I just remember her being, she was so invested in the role and in what she was doing and and was so, it wasn't just that she was coming in and doing this part, she was so invested in the process and I was so impressed by that and I, I learned a lot from her. So I suppose it's a little late for an apology, huh? You suppose correctly. Name three spooky or fun things that you learned while filming the show. Well, that everywhere in New Orleans is haunted. <laughs> everything's haunted, the, the city's haunted. I mean, I learned a lot about witchcraft. There were two Wiccans on, on set and I learned a lot about witchcraft. It wasn't that spooky to be honest, I guess that's not the right answer, but I I, uh, I learned a lot about, um, about this sort of like going back to nature and the kindness aspect of witchcraft as it's practiced by Wiccans. People, people in New Orleans, they've seen ghosts. Everyone believes in ghosts, they've seen them. I've never seen a ghost. If you open your mind, you can be transformed. 
Now your character plays a neurosurgeon, which I'm sure was so fun to play. If you weren't an actor, name four professions that you would be doing. Teacher, um, pop star. Can you um, say? Are no, you a great but I, if, if, if we're talking fantasy, hey. give me a good voice and I'll figure out the rest. Lawyer, although I'd probably be a bad one because I would be so nice to everyone. I'd be like, oh, just, We'll figure it out later in the contract. Um, I guess doctor, I like to help people. And finally, give us five reasons to watch Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches on Sunday, January 8th. It's entertaining. You will laugh at times. You will definitely cry. It's scary. And Anne Rice was a fascinating woman who told these stories for really distinct reasons. And so you get to learn more about, um, about the story that she wanted to tell and why. And everyone should go Google her and dive into who she was and why she wrote these stories. This power goes way back in your family. Alexandra, thank you so much for joining me. Everyone, be sure to check out Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches when it premieres on January 8th on AMC Plus and AMC. All right, time's up. We'll see you back here next Thursday.